Hi and welcome back to Beach Bumbling. You know that water there is just absolutely gorgeous. The, the sand is super powdery and comfortable to walk on. But there comes a point in the week where you're going to want to get off the resort and do something a bit different and, and see Veradero. So today's video, that's what this is dedicated to. We're going to take you to some places that we ate off resort. We'll show you what they cost. We'll show you how we got around Veradero. We stopped by a nightclub. And if you know anything about us here, apart from watching our channel, we like a good taco. So part of the goal when we got to Veradero was to find a taco place, which we did. So we'll uh, share that experience with you. And finally, we're going to head over to Jocelyn Park and we're going to show you the place that sells the world's best pina coladas. That's right, the best on the planet, supposedly. So if you like pina coladas and getting caught in the rain, stay tuned. Let's go check out Veradero. Karen and I have been on a lot of trips together over the years and looking back if we had one regret it's when we were younger we stayed on the resorts too much. Uh, we would leave maybe once maybe twice during the week but for the most part we spent all our time on the resorts and looking back at that I wish we wouldn't have done that we would have got out more. If I can offer one piece of advice is just walk out the front door one day of the resort and, and find some things to do. Book an excursion off the resort. You meet new people on those. We've got friends that we met on excursions that we still talk to today. You know, go sit in the local restaurant. Go try the local meal. Talk to some people that are from the area that you're staying at. Get to know the area a little bit more. You're not going to regret it. I mean, always keep your safety in mind, but we did find Veradero to be a very safe place. So that wasn't a concern for us. Get out and take a look. If we never got off the resort, we never would have discovered Marquesitas in Mexico. It's just a great dessert if you don't know what it is, but, you know, just go find some experiences. There'll be plenty of time at the end of the day to go back to the resort and have a couple of bevies. So having said all that, let's go take a look at some of the places that we ate while we were there. We're off to get some supper. Um, I think we're looking for lobster, shrimp, something like that. I'm not really driving the bus on this one. I'm just following these guys there so we're looking for some place we can walk to tonight and then tomorrow we'll probably take a bus into town and uh, do a whole bunch of shit somewhere there's like a cerveceria where you get a beer like it looks like about two and a half three feet tall it's got a silt like it's a glass boat I don't know that wide it's got a cylinder about that wide in the middle with just ice down the whole thing to keep your beer cold and uh, that's my goal tomorrow is to drink one of those so that's what the goal is. So far today's been pretty good. Sun didn't really come out by itself, but my God, it's hot in Cuba and uh, humid. So uh, I got no problem with either of those things. Anyway, we'll talk to you later and uh, I'll show you some food. Hopefully it's good. We were staying on the west side of Veradero Beach at Club Kawama. It was about an eight minute walk from there to the restaurant past these killer crabs. Things were massive. Anyway, we ended up here at the Castle Nuovo Terrazza. It's a pizza place. Walked in past the lion. They got their menu up on a board. The pizza was actually pretty good here. I'd give it a 7 out of 10. Kim enjoyed her pasta. We didn't get one, but you could get a grilled lobster here. We enjoyed this place enough that we actually went back twice. Tonight we had two pizzas, a pasta, three beers, a mojito, a sangria, and a cuba libre. That came to 3,225 pesos. That's about 46 bucks Canadian or 35 bucks US. We exchanged at 70 to 1 Canadian. If you happen to see our market video from last week, you'll know that we tried to go to the Factoria Veradero 43 Cerveceria um, to get that big beer that I just talked about earlier. And there's a lineup, so we just weren't in a waiting in the sun in the line. So today we're going to get it though, and I'm stoked to get this big beer. I've been waiting for months to try this. So after months of planning and waiting and dreaming on this massive beer, and after one failed attempt to get there earlier in the week, we were there finally, I'm salivating, I can't wait to see what this thing looks like in person. And lo and behold, I was informed they discontinued it, so I got kicked right in the nuts by fate there on that one. But that didn't stop us from enjoying our lunch here. For lunch we tried some of the local dishes. The two of us had the stew, came with potatoes, rice, and a bun. And the other two of us had a Picadillo Pollo, it's called, which quite honestly looked like wet cat food. But it didn't taste like it. It tasted really good. It came with rice, squash, and a slaw in a bun. We had the Clara beer, Al and I, two of them, and the girls had mojitos. All that came to under 15 bucks Canadian. Four adults with four drinks. That's crazy. 
If you want to save a couple pesos, we recommend that you do the lunch specials on the chalkboard. They definitely were a little bit cheaper, but they are a little bit more in the local variety. Something to consider here is that when we went and there was a lineup and we didn't bother going in, that was on a Saturday and it was very, very busy. We went back on a Tuesday and we walked in and got a table immediately, so maybe something to think about there. We took the hop on, hop off bus down to Calle 62. It's kind of a touristy area, lots of different restaurants and stuff there. And we found a taco place, so you know we're into that. Well, we found some tacos here in uh, Cuba. Um, the options were cheese or ham and cheese, which is new to us, but uh, anyway, we're giving it a shot. It actually tastes kind of good. Not a ham. Everything's ham, this, ham, that in Cuba. But uh, anyway, bucket list check taco in Cuba. More later. Here's a look at the two tacos that we got. The first one was the cheese one on the left, and then the ham and cheese one on the right. Tons of vegetables in it, and I had a little hot sauce on the side. I should probably mention the name of this place is called Tacos and Crepes, which <laughs> seems like an odd combination. The tacos were decent, and uh, the cheese is really tasty. I don't know what kind of cheese it is, but it's got some flavor to it. It tastes like an old cheese. Um, I'm not real sure what we paid, but I guess we're gonna find out in a minute when we check out. I'll uh, just update it. Consistent with the other restaurants, here's the blackboard menu. Notice that we could have got picadillo, which is what I had at the last restaurant, or bacon. We could have added that for 40 pesos. We just chose not to. All total, we had a ham and cheese taco, a cheese taco, and a water that cost us 127 pesos. That ended up being about a buck 80 Canadian or a buck 35 US, based at 70 per Canadian. So pretty cheap, won't hurt the pocketbook, and if you're staying at the Hostel Boulevard, it's right across from that. Once you step off First Avenue on the Calle 62, you'll see a one of these You Are Here signs. That'll let you get the lay of the land pretty quickly. While you're down at Calle 62, you might as well walk around, check out some of the stores and the shops. Maybe stop and have a cocktail on a patio or something like that. Lots of restaurants, like I said, around there. We thought it was cool how they painted the sewer covers here in this little area. For those of you looking for some accommodations that don't cost as much, yes, they do have hostels here. There's one right here on Calle 62. At the end of the street, you have a disco. There's a mall there on the right. Lots of restaurants in this area here. This is the busiest part of Veradero during the day. There's also a bank down there on the right if you absolutely need it. We tried some of that sugar cane juice out when we were on a jeep tour at Rancho Gavioto. If you want to learn more about that, you can check out the video on our channel. We'll link it in the description. If you do head down to Calle 62, you should check out the Beatles bar. They've got live music outside there. They've got lots of Beatles memorabilia if you're into that. You can get your picture taken with a Beatles statue. They didn't have any beer available when we were there, but you could get mixed drinks. You could get something to eat. There's plenty of places to sit outside. You access the washrooms there from the outside. And you better bring some cash because they expect a tip when you use it. This place seemed to be open later than most. And if you like the live music, it's between 9.30 and 1 o'clock every night. Well, this might not be the cheapest place to get a drink and hang out. We feel that with a combination of the live music and all the Beatles stuff to look at, it made it a worthwhile stop. If you walk through the Beatles property, you're going to end up at Jocelyn Park. It looks amazing here, lit up at night. But there's something even more amazing about that park during the day. And we'll get to that at the end of the video. But in the meantime, we're going to take a quick walk through all the ways to get around Cuba. The first one, which is our personal favorite, is walking. You get to learn the area so much quicker if you walk. You meet people, you see things you normally wouldn't see. The beach here in Veradero, you can walk it forever. And there's lots of beach accesses, so if you come up from anywhere on the beach, you're going to be like maybe on the main street or a block away, I think it is. So you can get to most places down the beach. If you walk the roads, they're in relatively good shape. The sidewalks aren't bad. I've seen a lot worse in Mexico, so if you have mobility issues, you should be okay. We found Veradero to be a safe place to walk around to. We weren't too worried about that. The one thing we will say, though, is that Cuba can get real hot real quick, especially when it's humid out. Those are the times that you will probably not want to walk too far as you can see from some of our other videos we set out to walk and then within five minutes we ended up getting a cab or something else. So. Walk is fine, walk is great, but maybe keep it to the early morning, later afternoon and stick away from lunchtime. Second way is cabs. 
Some of these cabs are pretty cool old classic cars. Uh, just keep in mind that they're not getting a whole bunch of brand new cars anytime soon in Cuba. We stayed at the west end of Veradero Beach and anything from Calle 62 back towards the Club Kawama on the west end was a $5 cab ride. There was a couple times where they tried to get $10 from us and we already knew better by that point and just said thanks, we'll grab the next one and then they drop their price generally every time I think. We found the drivers to be really polite though and it wasn't uncommon if they didn't have a fare to see them polishing their car so they do take pride in it. Next up, let's talk tuk-tuks. So what in the tuck is a tuk-tuk anyway? These are those football helmet looking things you see driving around. They cost a little bit less than a cab. Not the most comfortable ride in the world, but it gets the job done. Our driver was super polite. He gave us a ride to the market, waited for us for 35 minutes to do our shopping, and then took us to our next destination. Kieran tipped him with a pack of gum and he couldn't have been happier. They, I guess they don't get a lot of bubble gum there. Those with mobility issues might want to skip these. There's not a whole lot of room in there and not the easiest thing to get in and out of. So if you're not a walker, the next cheapest way to go is a hop on, hop off bus. The price for that's five bucks US, about six and a quarter Canadian, and you have to buy your ticket at a booth on the side of the street. You can't pay cash on the bus. This ride loops around pretty much all of Veradero Beach to all the resorts to the very far west end. So you can really get wherever you want to go on this bus and you're not limited on how many times you can get on and off. The bus starts running at 9.30 in the morning and ends at 9 o'clock at night. So if you're going for a late dinner or out for some late night drinks, just know you're not taking this bus back. Just a tip, you're gonna be tempted to sit on the top level of the bus, and that's okay, but it gets super windy back there, so you wanna sit as close to the windshield as you can, and especially if you're gonna record video, it'll be a lot quieter for you. Although we didn't rent one, you can get a scooter for 25 or 30 bucks a day, or the longer you rent it for, the cheaper it'll get over the week. And there are car rental places in Veradero, we just didn't look into that because we weren't interested in renting a car. One of the more enjoyable ways we found to get around Veradero was to take a horse and buggy ride. We found it to be a roughly the same price as a cab for the distance that we traveled anyway. And in speaking to the drivers, they seem to really care about their horses and they do give them a lot of breaks throughout the day. The seats aren't the most comfortable, but it is a nice little romantic ride through the town. Finally, we got this yellow train bus thing. I don't know anything about it. Every time I tried to get a picture of it, I couldn't. So if you know anything about it, leave it in the comments, please. Speaking of comments, feel free to leave one below, and if you like the video, let us know by giving us a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell if you want to be notified when we make a new video. Those things all help us grow our channel, and we greatly appreciate it. When we were researching a trip to Cuba, we looked at the list of things to do in Veradero, and what kept popping up was the best pina coladas in the world were in Jawson Park at this bar. So if you've been watching our channel at all, you know that we got to check that out. So let's go take a look and see for ourselves. Holy shit, it's hot. We are going to what we're told are the best, which drinks this? Pina Colada. Best pina coladas, not only in Cuba, not only in the Caribbean, but in the world. And this is at a park called Jason Park. Jason Park, I think it is. But uh, yeah, that's what we're doing right now. Overlooks the water. I don't know what, just like a big pond. I don't know what that is. Just an inlet from the river. Or an inlet maybe from the river, but uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing right now. It was on our bucket list. And uh, see, that's in behind me. That's what we're going to be looking at. And that is the place I'm told where they make these things. So bucket list is almost getting completed. Should be because we're leaving tomorrow. So we'll let you know how it goes. So this is the name of the place that has these drinks. So it's going to be backwards because I'm doing this on uh, selfie. But it's called uh, Barbera Taro 1920. And we'll go in, get a drink now. So, uh, Adam, I don't drink these very often, but I thought it was really good. Karen, you thought what? A little too sweet for me. Yeah. Like dessert. Like dessert. I liked it. <laughs> but uh, I won't get another one. But uh, yeah, no, it was good. If you get a chance, you should try one out. I have no idea what they cost yet, so uh, maybe you won't want to. But 180 pesos. 180 pesos, Cuban pesos. So. Yeah, it's worth the stop, I think. You should do it. Jocelyn Park. <laughs> we were there on a Thursday. The place wasn't super busy or anything like that. Here's a picture of the pina coladas. Karen was right. They did kind of taste a little bit like a dessert. I wouldn't want to drink a whole bunch of them, but they were pretty good. For those of you that want to sit near the water, we've got you covered. You can rent one of these boats and putt around in the pond there for the day. It really is a nice little park you should check out. Well, I didn't get any pictures of the food, we'd like to mention the Waco Club as well. It's located 
roughly behind the Beatles, uh, back one road. It's a little bit more upscale. The food there was really good though. It's a little bit more pricey. They have a second floor patio you can eat on at, and uh, we ate there at night. Great atmosphere. One tip though is to get to these restaurants a little bit earlier in the night if you want to guarantee a menu item. As the night goes on, they start to run out of things. That's no exception here. Well, that's going to be it for today's video. If this is the first time that you're tuning in, thanks for stopping by. We've got lots more videos on our channel if you want to take a look. Next week, we'll be doing a first-timer's guide to Veradero. So have a great week. Maybe go have a pina colada now. Until the next time, cheers.